Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life with Sterling Fox on AM 650. Welcome back. We're talking boating on Boomer Life on this episode of the program with two members of the board of directors of Boating BC. Alan Stovell and Brendan Keyes are with us. Mr. Stovell is the managing partner with Western Marine Company. And Mr. Keyes is the marine sales manager down there at GA Checkpoint. And guys, and Brendan, we'll, we'll pick it right up where you left off moments yep. ago. We were talking about about the, the whole matter of boating as a, a pleasurable pastime. And one of the reasons not everybody in British Columbia is a boater is because a lot of us think that it's simply, it's beyond our ability to afford. Boating is a rich man's pleasure. And Brendan, you disagree and you get young people with little kids coming into your store at GA Checkpoint all the time looking for starter. Get us out on the water. We're dying to get going. And for 1500 bucks, off they go. And that's basically, yeah, that's the small side of it. I mean, for people who just want to get out and do some coastal boating and uh, small lakes fishing, of course, you know, for people to go boating, there's always kind of some activities that go along with that. That could be, you could be... Um, fishing on some of the smaller lakes or you could be a water sports family sure and uh pretty much you could you know you can spend as little as you want but you know uh, we see a, a really large growing segment of the business right now is is the pontoon uh, business and anything about that is you're talking you know a pontoon boat where you can get maybe you know a couple of families on there and you can get a lot of people on board and, and these, these aren't the houseboats that we see up in the shoe swap. Those yeah. are pontoon boats. They're, they're, but, but they're they're purpose built. They're yes. like RVs on the water. Correct. Whereas a pontoon boat, this is yeah. a new phenomenon, especially in cottage country, isn't it? Yeah, and it's growing. It's a it's a really large growing segment right now because, of course, it's yes, it started primarily with the cottage side of it. But we have lots of customers that are are buying them as their their own personal piece of waterfront. Um, they can get out on the water. You know, you can have you know two families or large ten and twelve people on board. And, uh, you know, you can water ski behind them. You can really? tube behind them. Mm. Um, they had definitely have kind of come a long way from where they started many years ago. Um, they, uh, you know, financing is quite easy on, on some of this product. Uh, that's a neat thing with some of the banks right now. They give larger terms on, on, on financing small boats. So you can amortize that over like 20 years. So it oh, makes it very affordable for people to be able to get into boating right. and not have to, uh, you know, that initial investment. Alan, is there a point, though, at which in, in terms of the life of the would-be boater that it becomes almost redundant? In other words, is it, is it ever too late to get no. started? No, never too late. This is boomer life. There's a lot a of people are listening. You know, we're we're at the end of our working careers. We got a few dollars. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you know, uh, uh, would like to maybe spend some of that on fun things. You know, we've been working our tails off forever in a day. That's right. Now it's time to have a few laughs. Thank you. No, it's never too late. And there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a, a nice physical aspect to being on the water too, if you choose to do it that way. Kayaking and stand up paddle boarding. I see lots of people who I would call boomers that are. I see them on the ferry traveling back and forth to the island with uh, two kayaks on the roof and they've been off on the west coast or they're heading up to the interior or something and uh, you know they've clearly got into it later on and some of those people may actually have been moved from bigger boats down to the kayaks and paddle boards but that that's an easy way to get into the business or not into the business I'm sorry but into the uh, into the lifestyle it's just so spectacular the the, the, the geography we have here is fantastic yesterday morning I was sitting up at uh, at Center Bay on Gambier Island. So Gambier Island is just north of Bowen, those who have trouble visualizing where it is. It's an island with three or four deep, very deep bays in it. Okay. And I'm sitting there on my boat looking south out down down the bay and out towards Bowen Island. And the ferries are going by, the Langdale Ferry is going by, the Nanaimo Ferry is going by. It's flat calm out there. And I'm out with two friends on my paddle board and uh, out for an hour having a great paddle and a nice little workout and uh, on calm water. And it's just it's so unthreatening and so mm. easy to do. And the investment to get into that is, is uh, can be very low, and that a lot of the paddle boards are inflatable. So if you're a, if you're an apartment dweller, a townhouse develop, uh, a dweller, and you have a little uh, storage space, you they can be you let the air out of them and roll them up, put them in the back of your car, put them in a storage locker. It's just real easy. Right. Yeah. A lot of people, I, I suppose, you know, when we think of getting into boating in that sort of classic phrase, you know, we're thinking of uh, automatically something. 35 feet long that you have to tie up at Coal Harbor, and, you know, it's a big deal. And we forget that a kayak is a boat. That's right. And if you go, if you got a kayak, hey, you're, you're a boater, That's just right. like the guy with the 35-footer. That's right. And a lot of, that gets a lot of people into the gets a lot of people on the water when they're young. They get into a kayak, they get into a paddleboard or whatever, and the next thing you know they're into a small sailboat or they're taking sailing lessons. Right. The other thing with boating is, you know, that it, it's important to get some basic training, but there are so many opportunities to do that. You know, you can do, you can do an online course. 
and get your, your operator certificate, but there are sailing schools and training facilities and clubs that offer training. So, you know, those are those are important things to do, but there are a vast number of opportunities to get that education. Right. Let me stop you, though, and back you up just a half a sentence there, because that's this is a part of what Voting BC does, right. uh, is the education component for British Columbians. And one thing that all British Columbians, all British Columbians, in fact, all Canadians are now required to do if we want to operate a motorboat of any kind. That's right. Is we need an operator certificate, which that's is correct. which is properly referred to as... It's a it's a certificate of operator competency, but I think right, we, right. yeah that that's what they call it. Okay, so. and it's a it's a boating license. That's isn't right. It? Yep. And, uh, and so even if you're a 12 year old kid with that little uh, 10 foot uh, aluminum boat, Brendan, yeah, you got to have one of those. Got to have you? one of them. And it's a great program to kind of basically. I have three daughters, and we've put them all through the course. Um, of course, yes, you can go online and do it. It's probably not a bad idea. There's I think some local. Um, classes that you can put them into for four hours where they can kind of learn the basics and you want them to learn the basics of understanding what, it, you know, the safety factor of, of you operating a boat. So um, nothing too major to get kids, uh, you know, you should get all your kids kind of trained so that they can, uh, they can operate a boat. Yeah. yeah, Alan, you have uh, w one of your uh, company operates uh, in Ontario, north, That's right. north of Toronto. I'm going to spend some time there in a couple of weeks. And last summer, I was back on the in cottage country north of Toronto up in Muskoka. And I was surprised at the OPP, the police, uh, provincial police vehicles or boats right. on the water checking yeah. Yeah. for operators got your license yeah, you know they right. want to see your uh your your float the flotation devices for everyone on board they're checking for booze and they're checking for the license of the person operating the boat and if the person operating the, the boat didn't have one the boat was tied up and that was the end of that outing you got to have the license and you also have to have it with you which is one of the things some people forget you, right. you need to have it with you it's not good enough that you just you're not to tell the officer you've got it you've got to have it with you and they're also checking for basic safety equipment and just trying to make things safer on the water, prevent accidents. I mean, that's really, you know, to, to the to the long-term health of the industry is it needs to be a safe activity. So when people get their basic training, um, then we know that there are, re there are a reduced number of accidents. One of the best places to get it is actually through the Canadian Power and Sail Squadron. Because right, right. They, will, they will put you through a, a much more in-depth course and give you a lot more knowledge, particularly if you're going to be operating a little bit larger boat. Um, but you will get your operator competency certificate as a part of your uh, power, Canadian Power and Sail Squadron uh, basic course. And more information, by the way, about getting your uh, operator's uh, certificate is available at uh, boatingbc.ca. That's correct. You, you have that on the website. Yeah, it really is a great information portal for anybody interested in boating at any level. So, so uh, just to the education component that you both alluded to now, uh, if someone says, you know, I've always wanted to be a boater. Uh, you know, and now I'm at that point in my life where I could actually be one if mm -hmm. I wanted. I got a few dollars. I got a, I got a, a little bit of time, but I don't know the first thing about it, and I don't swim. Right. So, am I now officially out of the game? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Swimming is an important thing to, for people to be able to do, but the the the, um, the the variety and comfort available now in personal flotation devices, which everybody should use, mm -hmm. are such that it's really not a problem. I mean, when I started sailing, and I was 11 or 12 years old, they used to give us these giant foam and K-POC things, keyhole jackets that, that, that you they, know. That, they were called life they, preservers. They, life preservers. And they, they were, were horrible. hot. They yeah. were really hot. Not only that, we had to demonstrate that we could swim a certain distance in it. So the first day, they'd throw you in the water with this thing on, and you had to sort of somehow swim. Flail around but and that's, stay That's just stay not alive. the case anymore. You, you can wear a personal flotation device all day long, and, and be, after a while, you hardly know you've got it on. That's so true. there's really no excuse for everybody not wearing those. And in a small boat, you really do need to have those, and not only have them, but wear them. And, Brendan, here in British Columbia, we have the luxury of both types of boating. We have all of those fantastic hundreds, if not yeah. thousands, of lakes between here and the Yukon border. Yeah. And we have the, the beautiful Pacific Ocean. Talk about the best of all possible worlds. We are so fortunate here in B.C. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a lake boater myself. I I'm so much, probably don't spend a lot of time on the salt side. I, uh, we have, uh, my family have uh, property up in uh, the Caribou country. Okay, sure. And we'll spend, I have three daughters, and, you know, for us, to getting away to the cabin and uh, spending three days of boating. We're, we're pontoon boaters. Okay. We, we enjoy getting, you know, f uh, you know, friends and families on the lake and getting out there and, and uh, cruising the day up and down. 
um, in fresh water because we like that the ability to be able to jump in, swim, and climb back out again, and uh, you know do our skiing and tubing. We take that pretty serious, so, uh, <laughs> like most do. We're uh, and of course very competitive, all of us. So. Nothing like a serious tuber. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> How but, long you can stay on, I might add. But you know, I, uh, I absolutely yeah. get your love of fresh yeah. water. And Alan, when I first moved out to British Columbia in the early 70s, I was I have a friend who had a a 26 foot sailboat. That's how I learned to yeah, sail. Right. I was a crew guy. Two of us. Yeah. He drafted us, and we crewed, and he raced, and we got to be pretty good. I have to tell you, though, as a as a freshwater kid from inland, I was terrified of the ocean. It was so big, and there were creatures in there that could eat you. And I mean, really, I mean, just it really. Unless you uh, you grew up with you took sailing lessons when your mom I did got you going there at eleven. Uh, uh, so if you grow up next door to it, it's no big deal. No, I had never had any fear of it at all. But when, lots of people do. When you move to it. It's right. it's something Brendan and I have had to yeah, adjust yeah. to. I, I, um, I love the fresh. <laughs> uh, yeah, still a little leery of the salt. Ah, uh, just you know, it's just. Uh, I mean, I do enjoy uh, w you know some boating on that. We uh, our uh, dealership is located at the end of Burrard Inlet. Of course. So yeah. of course, there's nothing better than uh, you know we do a lot of uh, evening cruises up the, uh, the up the inlet or. You know, if we want to for afternoon, we'll kind of get all the staff on board and we'll kind of maybe cruise into Granville Island because it's a nice little jaunt, you know, sure. a couple hours and you can be down the end of the inlet. Right. Um, so let's, uh, you know, we do like our, uh, that's the neat thing about BC is boating in BC is that it's so many different things uh, from salt water to fresh water. But uh, I, I probably would lean myself a little bit more to the, the fresh water. Well, and, and I'm, I'm the opposite. Exactly. I mean, I'm not in the salt water all <laughs> the time. <laughs> right, right, right. And I, I, you know, years ago when I met my now wife of nearly 40 years, she was not a boater at all. She was a very good swimmer, but I introduced her to boating. And uh, she Re would was she a reluctant? Uh... No, not really. But we, when I remember one time we were out sailing on my dad's boat um, with permission or without, I forget, um, and <laughs> sitting anchored off uh, English Bay, off, off uh, West Vancouver, and we were rafted to another boat. And there, in other words, two boats at anchor tied together. Right. And uh, my wife was stepping from one boat to another, and she did the classic: the two boats drifted apart, uh -oh. with one foot on each boat, and <laughs> down she went. <laughs> down she went. The boats came back together, and she popped up smiling, and I knew right then this is a girl I could marry. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> To this day, she's a great she's a great sailor and a and a really great supporter of our boating activity as a family. So well, you know, and here's another thing: both of you have talked with glowing faces as you do about the time you spend uh, you, Brendan, with your three girls, and Alan, you with your wife and friends. The the it's the family aspect. This is a, an an activity that every member of the family, regardless of age, can absolutely enjoy to the max. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's memories, people, you, you you talk to people who've been on the water, and they, they usually when you're on the water, that's all they talk about. We don't really talk about politics. We don't talk about anything else. We just talk about being on the water, what we did yesterday, what we're going to do tomorrow. Yeah. And you talk to people socially who are on the water, and that, that what they really want to talk about is what they did on the boat or what they're going to do on the boat, even when they're not on the water. Right. It's just the top of mind for everybody. So, Brenda, are you a fisherman? I do. <clears throat> uh -huh. I, uh, as much time as I can. I'm not a very good one, I might add. But I do, of course, that's kind of the neat thing. I guess they call it fishing and not catching because I, uh, I do spend my fair time out there. Well, you see, you and I are pretty much alike. In that <laughs> yeah. For me, I, I've reconciled myself to the joy is in the fishing. Anything yeah. you catch is sheer gravy yeah. and bonus. It's, it, it's the fishing. It's the activity that it, I get. It's an excuse to go boating. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> now, of course, yeah. uh, you, you, you wouldn't mind, I suppose, getting out onto the salt water to enjoy the current uh, salmon run now, would you? Man, right. We, uh, yesterday had a customer in that kind of uh, was uh, just – there's a bunch of them that have been spending a lot of time in the river right now and are pretty pumped and excited about sure. kind of what we're seeing right now. That's kind of, and it's a good reason to get everybody out in the river. Um, we're seeing a whole bunch of people uh, coming in right now, kind of trying to pick up some, you know, 14 foot aluminums and uh -huh. 25 horsepowers to do the river run. So it's exciting. We're fortunate this year. We have a really good run. And of course, you know, um, everybody looks forward to a, l a little bit of piece of fresh salmon. So, and uh, so it's uh, it's pretty exciting to see that that run this year, and uh, it's uh, it's very very positive for the business. And, and Alan, you see people, and and seriously, you see people yeah. with sailboats out there uh, bobbing around yeah. in the chuck, and they're fishing off the they back are. of the sailboat. Doesn't matter yeah. at all. Yeah. If there's a run going on, there's a rod on the boat, and it's in the water. But it's not just the run. I mean, yeah. even you know this yeah. time of the year, actually all year round here, 
um, people are a lot of people are crabbing and prawning. True, uh, right. So yeah. this this weekend, actually this weekend and last weekend, I spent quite a bit of time. I'm I'm, I'm what I call a poacher. So I, I hang around with a lot of guys that that fish for crab and prawns. I don't actually have the gear myself, but ah. I, I I partake and see, I drink. We'll, we'll have to coordinate some. I'm, uh, see, I'm <laughs> a scuba right. diver. I I do that uh, underwater night prawn diving right. stuff. Now that's good fun, <laughs> and the eating is spectacular. Yeah, I was eating I was eating fresh crab and prawns all weekend. You know. Oh just, boy. And there's there's a bounty of it out there. You mm-hmm. know. Um, fresh crab, it's just easy to get. Prawning is a little harder, but you just got to find the right hole and have the right gear. But it's again, it's not expensive to get into, and you can, you can nearly sustain yourself. I mean, it, it doesn't. There doesn't have to be a salmon run for you to take, you know, to take bounty from the ocean. Right. I want to talk with Brendan a little bit more about inflatables when we come yeah. back after the break. But just before we go, Alan, one of the things that you pointed out was the difference because you've been <laughs> you've been a sailor now. You've been boating in Vancouver waters for over forty years. Right. And you were talking about how. How, th- how things have changed, because uh, back in the day, when you first started out, most boats would pull a little dinghy. That's right. And uh, and now that's changing. It's, yeah. it's evolving. That's right. And the two, two things there. The, the, the advent of the, uh, the advance in technology and inflatable boats has changed, so people have much more sophisticated inflatables that they carry. Right. But the other thing is is, uh, is kayaks and paddle boards, which 20 years ago, you didn't see anybody with that kind of thing. And nowadays, you see a lot of boats out there, power boats and sailboats, towing a little dinghy, but they'll also have a couple of paddle boards or a paddle board and a kayak and so they're out there they go on anchor or tie up at a marina but the next thing you know those small boats are in the water and That's they're right. not doing other activities so it's now it's enhanced the boating activity because it becomes a multifaceted thing now right so you the, drive you drive the boat to yeah, one place right. and then you do a different kind of that's boating right. when you get there and the nice thing about a kayak is that when you're in a kayak you're really you're, you're so close to the water I and mean, sure. you're right there and you can paddle a kayak right in shore you can be you can sit in a kayak in six inches of water sure and so you can you know there's all kinds of life there and the water is often very very clear um, in most parts of the Gulf Islands and up north, and um, it just adds another whole dimension to what you're doing. Okay, a uh, well, very quick question just before we go to break. To both of you, uh, have either of you a story to tell about a personal moment on the water in which you had a very, very close encounter with a whale? Yes. Yes. Both of you. Both, yeah. Brendan, you first. Um, actually, mine was uh, up in uh, Bella Bella. I would uh, out to, when I worked for Yamaha, we were um, we looked after all the fishing lodges up there. Oh, sure, plenty most, of them up yeah, there. Exactly, most people get up there to kind of spend a couple of days uh, doing some. That's fishing. where the trophy fish are. <laughs> that is for some big stuff. And we were um, out one morning doing a test on an outboard, and the uh, it was uh, foggy and the fog was just lifting, and uh, we're out in a 17 foot boat and a pod of whales went by. I mean, they breached. Uh, I'm not 10 feet from the boat. Oh boy. And uh, if you want to see two grown men cry. That was the one moment where it was just so overwhelming for the size of this uh, this whale. And to pop it out right beside us, we, I guess, were getting a little close. Uh, we didn't see them there, but there were some calves in, in there, and they uh, we got a little close, and they were just letting us know, did you know what? need to stand back a little bit. Oh, just, okay, just pushing, uh, warning just, you just away. Warning. We in, hadn't seen the them. In the gentlest of ways. Yes, and it was, but it was, we were very fortunate to be able to get that close. And, no uh, kidding. Did, had no idea they were there. They just appeared beside the boat, and it was just... Uh, it's pretty unbelievable. It's one of those things that, you know, it was 15 years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I'll bet. It's pretty it's, cool. Uh, pretty really? Cool. How about you, Alan? Well, I, two, two quick ones. One, one was my, my youngest son, Christopher, was actually water skiing with a group of friends off the, off the shore in Tawasson, and uh, he finished his ski or his wakeboard or whatever he was doing, and he was swimming back to the boat, and all of a sudden there was a seal popped up right beside him. Okay. He thought, oh, I'm not so sure I like that. So he wondered why that seal was there. Anyway, he climbed back on the boat, and no sooner did he have this his second foot back on the boat than a whale, killer whale, popped up on the other side of the boat. Uh-huh. So it was right there, and of course the seal didn't like the killer whale, and so that's why it was <laughs> panicking, to so to speak. And uh, the whale popped up right there, so that was a little closer than he liked. Uh-huh. But, but yeah. a couple of years ago, my wife was coming to join me on the, she was coming across on the ferry from Tawasson to join me in the Gulf Islands, and I borrowed a friend's powerboat and went to pick her up at uh, Sturdy's Bay on Galliano sure. Island. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. So we came back through Active Pass in this 20-foot powerboat, and um, I had to stop. I actually had to stop at the at the Gulf Island side of Active Pass and wait for about 15 minutes as a huge pod went by in front of me. And, you know, you, the, the rules, there are rules about the up there, and you don't want to get too close to them these days. You know, there are rules about keeping your distance. Of course, yeah. So I basically just stopped, and we were treated to a, a spectacular... There, were, there had to be 10 of them, at least, and they just slowly swam by at the entrance to Active Pass, and... Uh, you know, probably fishing for salmon at that yeah, point yeah, in time. Yeah, wow. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty spectacular. Great stories. The, the closest I can come to that is, is inactive pass, as a matter of fact, on a BC ferry, right? And and the, the captain comes on the speaker and says, ladies and gentlemen, if, you're, if you'd like, 
off to the port side of the boat, yeah. there's a pod of killer whales. Right. And, of course, the whole boat goes, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 500 people are all of a sudden on one side of the boat. And <laughs> yeah. BC Ferries captains are really good about doing they that. They're very, very good. Yeah, they're great. everybody in the cameras. Yeah. and Oh, it's yeah. wonderful yeah. stuff. They know everybody loves it, and they never miss an opportunity to get everybody to, to so people on board don't miss it because it's easy to miss. I, I'm just glad the boat didn't fall over. Exactly. Our guests are Alan Stovell and Brendan Keyes, members of the board of directors of Boating BC. This is Boomer Life on AM650, and we're back with lots more right after this. It's all about the baby boomer lifestyle. Boomer Life on AM650.